I would read scripture and I would see the Trinity. Like I would see it. Like, you know, obviously we know the word Trinity isn't in the Bible. Yeah. Um, concept. Yeah. But the concept is there. Like you saw the distinction, especially between the father and the son. Yeah. And like, I would read it and I'm like, it's there. And, and, and nothing ever sat right with me because I would have to work it in my brain to be like, no, it's just because the, the son was converting into the father mm-hmm. or the father, you know, he became the son. Like it, it, I had to filter it and wire it differently in my head, but it never sat right with me. Because I'd be worried about your soul. Why you still be doubting you got a soul? Like you need to see to believe these things, but you believe things that you've never seen. Like feelings and hopes and dreams. The future emotions and gravity And sadly Everything you're rejecting Makes this whole life a tragedy And I got something to say I got something to say I got something to say to the world Welcome to the Milk and Meat Podcast I'm Andrew Krimkovich And this is the crew for today Hi, I'm Aldo LJ Jeremy And we're going to be going through Theology Proper Part 6 We've already covered the being The attributes of God In the previous episodes So check those out If you haven't seen those And now we're going to be starting on the several episodes we have on the Trinity. So, defining and describing God is often done with the use of negative statements, such as God is not a man, God is not finite, God is not this and not that, he's not this and that way. It's because we can kind of connect that better to what we're familiar with, uh, our own selves, the world around us, and it's easier to be able to explain what God isn't because that's the stuff we're, we're more familiar with. But to be able to affirmatively explain and articulate the makeup of God, the nature, the, the distinct being of him with all positive statements would be difficult because we don't have any spiritual understanding until God condescends and gives us that through his word. Um, and so that's why we have creeds. That's why we have statements statements of faith that's why we have confessions and catechisms to teach people so that they can learn from the word of god and they can understand because of the fact that there have been so many heresies so many false teachings things like that that even began to erupt while paul was still preaching paul was paul was already teaching people against the super apostles against people that proclaim that they have seen christ or be have these or those callings uh, we have that in John, we have that in Paul, we have that in so much of the New Testament that we need to be aware that there is a need to know what are the fundamental, what are the foundational truths of the Bible so that we can stand on it correctly and know when to dismiss something, no matter how flashy, how popular, how common a teaching might be. If it's not biblical, we need to oppose that and recognize that's not historic, traditional Christianity. So one of the one of the creeds that I thought would be good just to read through mm. so we can know kind of how severely and how seriously even the uh, third, fourth, and fifth century church took to the facts about God, his triunity, his nature, and, and that so much that they actually wanted everyone that claims to be part of the church to actually agree with these statements. So I think that's really important for us to to consider and to to read through. So here is the Athanasian Creed, and I'm going to read through it. And one thing I want to make note of is in the first line, you're going to see the word Catholic, and it does not mean Roman Catholic, such as papal or Mary worship. We're talking about Catholic as in the word universal, um, the universal faith, the universal church. There is one big, big C church. Um, that's the church that you are baptized into, you're brought into, you're unified with the people of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, through that faith in God, you are brought into one body. Uh, It's one church. But there's going to be a spread out aspect to that church. It's going to be different congregations, different countries, different people groups, all coming together into Christ. So it is one church, one faith. It is all one. Um, and that, that word is what the word Catholic is signifying, that oneness, that unity, that universal aspect of the church. So here is the Athanasian Creed. It says, Whoever wants to be saved should, above all, cling to the Catholic faith. Whoever does not guard it whole and inviolable with doubtless, will doubtless perish eternally. Now this is the Catholic faith. We worship one God in Trinity, and the Trinity in unity. 
neither confusing the persons nor dividing the divine being. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Spirit is still another. But the deity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-eternal in majesty. What the Father is, the Son is, and so is the Holy Spirit. Uncreated is the Father, uncreated is the Son, uncreated is the Spirit. The Father is infinite, the Son is infinite, the Holy Spirit is infinite. Eternal is the Father, eternal is the Son, eternal is the Spirit. And yet there are not three eternal beings, but one who is eternal. As there are not three uncreated and unlimited beings, but one who is uncreated and unlimited. Almighty is the Father, Almighty is the Son, Almighty is the Spirit. And yet there are not three almighty beings, but one who is almighty. Thus the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. Thus the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. As Christian truth compels us to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so Catholic religion forbids us to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father was neither made nor created nor begotten. The Son was neither made nor created, but was alone begotten of the Father. The Spirit was neither made nor created, but is proceeding from the Father and the Son. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three spirits. And in this Trinity, no one is before or after, greater or less than the other, but all three persons are in themselves co-eternal and co-equal. And so we must worship the Trinity in unity and the one God in three persons. Whoever wants to be saved should think thus about the Trinity. It is necessary for eternal salvation that one also faithfully believe that our Lord Jesus Christ became flesh. For this is the true faith that we believe and confess, that our Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, is both God and man. He is God, begotten before all worlds from the being of the Father, and He is man, born in the world from the being of His mother, existing fully as God and fully as man with a rational soul and a human body, equal to the Father in divinity, subordinate to the Father in humanity. Although He is God and man, He is not divided, but is one Christ. He is united because God has taken humanity into Himself. He does not transform deity into humanity. He is completely one in the unity of his person, without confusing his natures. For as the rational soul and body are one person, so the one Christ is God and man. He suffered death for our salvation. He descended into hell and rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people shall rise bodily to give an account of their own deeds. Those who have done good will enter eternal life. Those who have done evil will enter eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. One cannot be saved without believing this firmly and faithfully. That was a long statement. But, the, but it was so awesome. It's though. so good. Oh, man. It and, awesome. and it's interesting because when I studied into why do they give the name Athanasian Creed, it, it's attributed to Athanasius who was a... Was it fourth century? Mm -hmm. uh, fourth century theologian teacher. Uh, he was a polemical arguer for the truth. He argued against Arianism. He he was known for his standing firm in the faith. Um, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, on his gravestone they they put uh, the note something along the lines of Athanasius against the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like in, in Latin. Yeah. So it's like yeah, yes, um, yeah. You said Athanasius contra mundum. Contra mundum. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like. To be known that you would oppose even the greatest masses if it's yeah. to stand on the Christian faith. I think that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. We should be willing to just lose all popularity, lose oh, yeah. all comforts, lose all the all the thumbs up from everyone as long as we stand on the truth of Scripture. That's it's all that we're left with. Are we yeah. going to stand by God or are we going to go in our own direction into destruction? So the Athanasian Creed was probably penned between the 5th and 7th century. They don't have an exact date. The authorship is attributed to Athanasius just because it is similar in, uh, in, in content to what his life work was about, arguing against 
all of these false beliefs that were rising mm-hmm. up. Some of them started in the time when Paul was writing his epistles. Some of them started in the time when John was writing his first, second, third John epistles. We, we have evidence in the New Testament scriptures that there were already false teachings to rebuke, false mm-hmm. teachings to discredit and to stay away from. Um, we have uh, in the time that the creed basically argues against some of these things that argues against Arianism, which teaches that Jesus is less than God, uh, or like a created being. It te- teaches against monophysitism. Monophysitism. There we go. Don't ask me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, which teaches that yeah. Jesus was literally a mixture of God and man in yeah. such a way that there is no actual fullness to his godness. Right. Or the monophytes. To his monophytes. Yeah. yeah, the monophytes. That's right. Monophytes. Yeah. Uh, and. And then Nestorianism, which teach, teaches the absolute distinctness of the, uh, the God and man nature in such a way that Jesus actually had two persons battling within himself. So all of those things, they were, they were coming up. They were rising up. They had the, the entire issue with Arianism where it was actually leading people to believe that yeah. Jesus was less than God. He was like a demigod. He was just a created being. I mean, we have what? Um, Jehovah Witnesses coming from that mm-hmm. mentality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus is literally Michael the Archangel in disguise yeah. for a, for a portion of time. Okay, yeah. and then the, and there and are then, still people that kind of go with that. Yeah. I, I've talked to some Jehovah Witnesses. I was like, Hey, do you guys really believe this? And some of them would be like, Like they don't have like a solid yes. Yeah. This is our firm faith. And others would be like, Yeah, yeah. Like he was he was Michael. I was like, Where do you get that? Yeah. Where do yeah. you get that or their, idea? Their own at all? translation, yeah. uh, little W, the word. Yeah. Was with God, yeah, they'll, they'll or a s- God, or or I'm sorry, yeah, a yeah. A, a God, a little A, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, or little, yeah, is that what it is? Little G or little A? I, that's what that's what uh, cults and false teachings and heresies do. They they either change or they reject mm-hmm. the fundamental things pertaining to the faith. A heresy is something that that breaks or twists foundational yeah. things. Right? It's not like minor things. You right. can't say like. It's just error to say, you know, hey, women can't wear pants. (laughs) It's not heresy. (laughs) It's heresy to say Jesus Christ is not God. Yeah. Yeah. It's heresy to say that. So major fundamental things that will completely separate you from Christ if they are believed at heart level, truly. Um, So so what uh, what are we doing with the Trinity? Jeremy? (laughs) Well, I got sidetracked by by a thought I had. Let me get your idea. Yeah, get it. So, if you know, uh, one church says, "Okay, skirts need to be below the knees." You know, another church says, "You know, there's no dress code." No. Um, that should be something that's like a you know in-house debate. That should be a brotherly discussion. You know, yeah. but what if the other church calls you the heretic for not, you know, following their tradition? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does that in turn then make it to where we would deem them heretical for calling uh, something that shouldn't be a big issue a big issue? Um, if they're saying yeah, we are outside there, of the faith, because yeah, something of, could become something yeah. could become a heresy once it becomes. I think on um, that level it does because yeah, it, it now it's you're extra biblical at that point. It, it is extra biblical, but it also that's where you would go into arguing biblically mm-hmm. why it isn't because it can turn into because i mean if you bring up that point we're talking about the trinity in the way that we look at god if we take it into that context right some people uh might see certain things or maybe just don't understand certain things about god but the once you take it to another level just like andrew was saying that jesus is not god then that's just a whole yeah. other story i think that's that uh, maybe that's what i'm maybe I'm understanding incorrectly or correctly, Mm -hmm. is that now if you're saying that somebody is saved um, because of such and such, and it is an in-house debate, that's the issue when you're now dealing with the essentials. It's like if you, the essentials are the most important thing. Mm -hmm. They're they're the non-negotiables. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think um, I, I, I looked up heresy and dogma. Heresy, at least by Webster's definition, talks about when someone strays or detracts or disagrees with an already accepted norm or an already accepted opinion. That's what we see, at least all of these. I don't know. Maybe maybe we're just 
super simple minded nowadays where we argue about things that really don't matter and we yeah. make really big deals out of it. And yeah. I don't know if we could become a heresy in that. I guess it could. But ultimately, we see like major heresies, like stuff that changes God's identity, yeah. Uh, yeah. stuff that changes salvation's uh, effects or, yeah. or, or how it takes place, like stuff that matters for eternity. Like yeah. we're not arguing about that anymore. And if you think about it, it's like, why on earth aren't we arguing about the stuff right. that we should? We got Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses. We got cults in every different way. We got New Age spiritis yeah. uh, Spiritism. We, we got progressive Christianity. Let's argue against that. Mm -hmm. Here we got people arguing about wedding bands. Yeah. It's a real argument. It's a real thing that we need to actually and approach scripturally. Deep. And we have to. Yeah, we got we to gotta use First Peter and explain, yeah. like, hey, this is not... This is not talking about that. This is talking about in the church, ladies. You ain't here to pick up a man. Like, <laughs> quit peacocking in church. Mm -hmm. you know, it talks about, you know, don't dress. In the, it, it's talking about in the church how a woman should behave. Uh, but it's because women would, in that time, just dress themselves up all fancy, like super fancy, where they're glistening. Uh -huh. And in church, you shouldn't be more attracted or more detracted from the word to someone yeah. else. You should be there fully able to worship without mm -hmm. this person's wife looking like a crystal ball. Like, mm -hmm. that just shouldn't be the case. And there was women that were doing that. It's like, hey, you know, <laughs> dress modestly, humbly. Um, but but people don't consider that. They're like, no, 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 no jewelry. It's like, come on. They only said it to the woman. Please, let's just <laughs> yeah. think about this. Why would they say it only to the woman? Yeah. Usually when it's a general command where it's for men and women, they'll say it to the men. This one specifically, it's to the women. So we got to say, like, that is not a reverse. You don't say something to the woman, it automatically means man. Right, yeah. When you say something, man will not live on bread, that's not just man. That's yeah. mankind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if someone wants a general statement for mankind, it has to be the word man. It's just mm -hmm. the way it is. Yeah. It's not woman. Yeah. And, and people take these commands for women and apply it to the entire church. And then they have the whole dressing style. It's like, yeah. Yeah. come on, where where does the word modesty say six inches above the, or below the knee? Yeah. The word modesty means modesty. It means don't bring unto yourself undue or inappropriate attention yeah. for absolutely selfish reasons. Right. Don't dress in such a way where people look at you to check you out because you're making yourself some sort of an image of sexuality. No, if you want to bring attention to, uh, to to who you worship, sure. I mean, you could do a whole bunch of things. You could you could find a way to make a Christian T-shirt or something or yeah. whatever. Decorate yourself if you want to glorify God with that. But if you're decorating yourself because you want them to give you that whole wink and all that stuff, that's that's the immodesty. It's like mm -hmm. all self. That's immodesty. But there is a variation there that could change among cultures. Yeah, immodesty and. In, in Northern Africa is different from immodesty in the United States. Yep. Like everyone in some tribes even wear skirts, mm -hmm. just what they wear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not a violation of the do not put on that which pertain this unto a woman. Yeah. That's not a violation. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, or else Scottish pe people with a kilt yeah. have a problem. It's like, it's not a violation. Yeah. I, I, I got long hair too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I've told you before, like back in the day, if I uh, ever saw you, I would have never considered you a, Christian, right. let alone a pastor, <laughs> right, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, but I think that's that's the point. would have been the extra point. hard for you. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, Lord, save this man. This man and now lost. he's my pastor. So. <laughs> 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 it's funny how, how God works that's that crazy. out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> no, but it's I think it's, it's just to the fact that if you get people so hyper-focused on all the little things, the major things that deal with the heart, that deal with actual yeah. salvation, like it's not even touched. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, just think it's about so it easy. this way. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. so easy to do the external cheap stuff. Well, just mm -hmm. think about it this way. The reason why, there's all, why there are all these heresies is to get our focus off of who God mm -hmm. is according to Scripture. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. the same thing, but on a different level. It's yeah. all... It's strategy. It's what strategy. It is. It's, we know it's the work of the enemy. I mean, we were talking about Paul. We go to Colossians. He was going against the Gnostics just to simply state that the Son is God with the Father. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we see all these, all these things. So the same way that we're talking about um, uh, things that are in-house or, you know, according to what church you go to or whatever mm -hmm. movement or organization, rather. Um, you know, it the, it goes on another level when we're talking about God. Mm -hmm. Now, like you said, you have these creeds, and the reason why the creeds are there, the creeds uh, did not create the Trinity. The creeds were were something to to show what was already was already in practice, what was already understood established, from yeah. the Word of God. Yeah. Uh, it was already established. It was just to, once again, affirm this is what the Scripture states. Mm -hmm. 
it, it was because somebody would come in with a teaching and and the church would realize where people that are studied or biblically sound or literate biblically would be like whoa 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 this guy is first off picking up traction maybe we're getting people to go in his direction yeah. people to leave in the church because of this it's like hey guys let's all make a statement that we know what the traditional historical yeah. christian faith is let's spell it out and they would and the creeds would get more and more complex mm -hmm. like you got the apostles creed you got the nicene creed it's like it's amazing to see how how much more complex like the last few days i was going through this at the bedtime with my kids and i'm like I'm loving this. Like I'm spending mm -hmm. more time each night reading because I'm reading a different creed and it just keeps growing. And the Athanasian creed was the final one. I mean, unless you take the Chalcedonian statement, which is ex exploring the, the, the nature of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. But uh, it's just wonderful to see that um, people of God really do want to defend the faith and they want to mm -hmm. be as clear yeah. as possible. And just because we haven't heard something before, it doesn't mean it's not true. So we have to be able to kind of explore this stuff ourselves and see where does this come from? How yeah. long has this been held onto by the church? Is this new? Is this old? I mean, we came we came out of uh, we came out of a oneness theology, which, to, in most ways, I guess, would dissuade people from looking into anything Trinitarian. Yeah the the word Trinity itself was a bad word. Yeah, like mm. if you hear. Oh, they're teaching the Trinity. It's like, oh, they're teaching like the most false thing yeah. that's out there. Or if even like the word Baptist, like you, yeah. you hear somebody's a Baptist, like, oh, that's the enemy. That's wow. that's how far yeah. it went. And that's yeah. how deep it, it Ooh, reached. Wow. And it just goes to show how far theology can really blind a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bad theology. Yeah. yeah. I was exposed to the creeds for the first time. I mean, I didn't even know what a catechism was. A Roman Catholics will grow up in predominantly yeah, knowing what a catechism, catechism is. But I mean, if they still, if you're still worshiping Mary, you, yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. what you're studying. Well, and plus, they're, you know, I don't, I, they're not using the Westminster or, yeah, the, or yeah, the Heidelberg, that's true. But, so they're not using. But they, yeah, they have their own. They catechism. have their own catechism. But yeah. I mean, I came across the catechism, the shorter, the larger, the the confession of faith that meaty juicy just yeah. exposition of biblical yeah. truth to help you kind of grow and learn and mm -hmm. be able to put this stuff into words but the catechism also is, is in the same way kind of like a creed yeah. where it's like okay this is what we believe just in question and answer form yeah you know exactly it, it's all for a purpose i mean all of this was discovered at least for me uh in 2019 so two and a two and a half years ago i've been a christian by the grace of god since mid-2012 mm. And seven and a half years later, I find out that there are these wholesome documents that the church has held on to for 2,000 yeah. years. And I was told I shouldn't even look into it. No one ever mentioned the word creed from yeah. a pulpit. They, wow. I was like, what's a creed? Yeah. And if it was mentioned, it was a bad word as well. Yeah. yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's Man. amazing. That's why, that's why I think people really need to see, like, what has a church believed yeah. forever yeah. And why do we believe differently now if yeah. we believe differently? Yeah, I, now? I was just going to say, you know, it's that that cultish me mentality of if it's outside of our organization and what we're teaching, like mm -hmm. it's automatically dismissed and automatically false. Wow. And like with you, it's it, pertaining to the Trinity. I remember like in, in, the, in our previous organization, um, I would read scripture and I would see the Trinity. Like I would see it like... You know, obviously we know the word Trinity isn't in the Bible. Um, concept. Yeah, but the concept is there. Like, you saw the distinction, especially between the Father and the Son. Yeah. And, like, I would read it, and I'm like, it's there. And, and, and nothing ever sat right with me because I would have to work it in my brain to be like, no, it's just because the, the Son was converting into the Father, mm -hmm. or the Father, you know, He became the Son. Like, it, it, I had to filter it and wire it differently in my head, but it never sat right with me. And, uh, and it wasn't until, you know, stepping out and actually looking at all these other, uh, like, historical Christianity, just the fact that it is widely known and, all, like, established that it is there. And, and like, I wasn't crazy. Yeah. I wasn't wrong in my faith in, in seeing it. It is. It's, it's liber liberating. And yeah. it just it opened up a whole uh, can of worms, you yeah. know, of stuff for me to look and research and actually, like, learn proper uh, biblical uh, statements and, mm -hmm. and and studies. So, well, oh, yeah. good. 
Uh, well, I was going to say, in the same way Athanasius is against the world, uh, or was, <laughs> uh, the same way that these creeds and and, uh, and, and catechisms came into place is, the, well, take the uh, Westminster Catechism, for example. At this time, before those were, were written, that was when Queen Mary was killing all the pastors. Yeah. Uh, Bloody Mary. 270 Mary. or 280 pastors she burned, you know. I used to think that was just a, a beverage. <laughs> Bloody Mary. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I knew about it. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, start studying history. Like, oh, that's what she was. I don't know if you remember that at school. If you oh, went yeah. To public school. I remember you that. Know, uh, the restroom. Do the yeah. restroom. Yeah, you yeah. know, Bloody Mary. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but after Bloody Mary comes Queen Elizabeth, yeah. who is Protestant, who then starts kind of tugging the other direction. And then King James is, is involved too, but he's kind of political. It's yeah, not even political. a thing. Like, um, but out of that turmoil, comes the time for the question and answers. Uh-huh. And, and I, I'm, I'm imagining the same thing at the time of uh, Athanasius. It's a turmoil, and out of that is coming, like, strong documents, yeah. right? So, I mean, this kind of goes along with the whole theme of, of how every Christian should be. We should be the ones that stand up to give ourselves. Mm-hmm. Even when people are against us, even when our enemies hate us. Uh, we're, to, we're to stand up in truth and strength, but present ourselves as living sacrifices. Is yeah. what, it, what it comes down to. Uh, to we're to sacrifice our, ourselves to, um, uh, you know. And so it's hard because it's like, you know, we were talking about this earlier about, uh, you know, being firm, especially when you're we're, you're being attacked uh, on the street or something yeah. and people are, you know, yelling and, and you're able to, what did you say? Chop and mop. <laughs> <laughs> I like that statement. That was cool. <laughs> Chop and mop. But I mean, that's true, though. I mean, we have to be strong. Uh, but at the same time, give a, give ourselves into this. Like yeah. we have to, we have to sacrifice ourselves. There's there's such uh, thing as gentle boldness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, if it if it yeah. if in Second Timothy it teaches us to be gentle with our with our naysayers, basically knowing yeah. that they might be mm-hmm. they 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 are blinded to yeah. the truth held by the devil captive to do his will. Right. Hoping that God might grant them repentance, leading mm-hmm. them to, to yeah. knowledge and salvation. Yeah. It's like we're commanded to be gentle with yeah. those people. Those so people in this, that are cussing us out and whole, saying gross things about God. Right. We're supposed to be gentle with them. Yeah, yeah. But so in this whole Trinity idea, this this uh, debate, you know, this uh, issue that we have with the oneness, um, we ha- we need to be strong and yeah. stand up for truth, but but really be uh, giving of ourselves to try to help people come to the right understanding. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, there's a lot of bad ways that people handle this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you see mockery. Um, I mean, there's going to be some argumentative nature in any debates or some, and maybe even some conversations. It, it can't go to mocking. It just right. it shouldn't. And sometimes it does, and I see that. I'm like, mm, that could have been handled better. Yeah. But that's just what rises up in a human spirit when you're defending your stance mm-hmm. and you see someone coming in either either successfully or just in an opposition. It's like something rises up. That's yeah. just our human sin, yeah. sinfulness, our pride, our arrogance. I got it today. My, my wife was uh, uh, commenting. Uh, she commented a, a pretty large you know, comment on this lady's post on Facebook about how she was getting everybody's ideas about, uh, is it okay if she aborts her baby, mm-hmm. you know? And so all these people are posting, Oh, go girl. Oh, be you boo. Uh, all this <laughs> kind of stuff. And then Amy posts this thing about like, you know, lovingly, uh, you know, really thinking about this and understanding that this is a baby, this is a human life. And it's this, she put a lot of effort into putting her words together, deleted, Tweet, yeah, deleted the comment, right? Yeah. And so then another lady from my church, she commented, and Amy kind of, you know, commented on her uh, comment and to try to, like, you know, talk some sense into this whole thing, both deleted yeah. like that. Wow. And so it's like, you know, you get to like, Ugh. Yeah, that's but, the opposition you get. I, I made a comment because I got family back home, um, and they're all very outspoken to lots of feminist ideology, mm-hmm. things like that, and they're like, you know, something about abortion that are, they're supporting it. And I'm like, but, but please think about this. It, it's a different set of DNA. Like mm-hmm. it, it, if it was your body, that's one thing you could chop off your hand. I wouldn't recommend it, but you right. have the right to go into your kitchen and do whatever horrible thing to yourself. I still wouldn't recommend it or encourage it, but this is a set of DNA that's completely different. Might even have a different blood type. This mm-hmm. isn't your body. It yeah. just depends on you. Um, and I kind of articulated the fact that a baby would still, 
maybe not in visible direct connection to the same degree, but still to the same degree that baby would depend on the mother even after birth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mm -hmm. leave that baby on that baby bed yeah. for a week, that baby's going to die. Yeah. Now, your body does something to keep it alive for a while, but you are still fully responsible after. So it's not saying like, oh, no, it's, you know, it's my body. It depends on me. I'm like, it's, it depends on you when it's out of your body, too. So you can't yeah. use that argument. Right. But I was, I, I was mocked. I was laughed at mm. in that post. I'm like, great. I had a bunch of women laughing and uh, making comments saying, no uterus, no opinion. Mm. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, come on now. Like, this is such a strange argument point. Like, yeah. no uterus, no opinion. Like, you're telling me if I don't have a kid and you're beating your kid in front of everyone, I can't step up and right. say something. You're telling me if, 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 like, if I am not married and I see a man abusing his wife, I have no way to talk. Like, you're telling me I have to be fully involved in something in order to speak on it? Yeah. It's like, I'm a human being. I'm going to speak about life. Yeah, they're just echoing that whole mm -hmm. yeah. thing. Yeah, and it's just, it's like, you kind of just see that. It's like, man, that's not it. That's not mm -hmm. it. That's just not productive. We should be able to talk through these things, and we mm -hmm. can't. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's a right an way expectation. to handle all this. Yeah, there's, there's an expectation there that we are going to be hated mm -hmm. for standing up for the, the, the word of God, the true yeah. faith. Um, Jesus himself said it, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to say it word for word, but it was, uh, they hated me first. Yeah. They're going to hate you, but they hated me mm -hmm. first. Like, remember that. Yeah. So or, even, or even as far as that um, they'll kill you, they'll persecute you because they think they are doing a service to God. Yeah. Oh, It'll yeah. even go as far as that. I mean, yeah. that, and so. And that's not just. That's not just uh, extremist uh, oh, no. Muslims that are trying no, to no, no. kill for not at all. the glory in Allah. That's not. We're not talking about extreme horrible Muslim behavior mm -hmm. in those terrorist groups. Not all Muslims, obviously, yeah, of course. fall into that. That's an extremist group. And some people would think, like, that was it. They're killing to honor God. It's like, no, there's other people. There's people that walk into school and think that they're doing service to God by shooting yeah. people. Well, so, I mean, oh, yeah. if we just go back into the context itself, I mean, it's 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 the Jews that are yeah. God's people, that they're going against their, their brethren, their own brethren, thinking that they're doing a service to God, and they're willing to kill them and just like paul was doing before he was converted mm -hmm. you know so if if we if we take that basic example and now you multiply it and you put it in different areas and going back to what jeremy was saying you have to stand for the truth yeah yeah thank god we live in a in a country that that cannot happen right but we understand that there is a risk yet. involved yet there is <laughs> yeah. yeah there is a risk involved especially with the way that things are going now yeah. Yeah. you know so you, you never know but it's it's putting that faith in god and his word and standing for it understanding the the um the consequence the eternal consequence that's involved mm -hmm. that it, it's about it's about eternality it's not about the here and now yeah Mm -hmm. So when we when we consider the Trinity, we, we're going to consider the Father in this episode, and mm -hmm. we'll we'll go into it as briefly or thoroughly as we can. But there is a distinction between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but it's also simultaneous, and mm -hmm. that's that's what the triunity means. There is this mysterious, uh, difficult, maybe even impo I'd say impossible to put into full human words and yeah. a full completeness. There's a mystery to God that exists. Um, I'd say that's probably why God says, don't make any images of me. You'll never make it right. Oh, this, yeah. I am a living God and I'm beyond you. My thoughts are above your thoughts. Like, like clouds above, like I am above and beyond you. I live outside of time. Like this would be his statements. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. so far outside of our thought process that he didn't tell mankind anywhere in scripture to look up and find him. He literally never did that. It, he always directs people back to himself and what he's already revealed. Now, he didn't tell Moses to just look up. He just told Moses what to do. He didn't tell yeah. Abram uh, while he was still Abram, like, hey, you know, take these few little things from those pagan idols that you and your family worshipped uh, in Canaan and then come out of there with some of these ideas. He just said, go. And yeah. he was sent completely out of idolatry uh, and became the father of many nations, Abraham, later on. Mm -hmm. Like, there is always this unreachable aspect to God until yeah. God condescends and reaches down. Not, not just in our thoughts, but even in our actions. Mm -hmm. Tower of Babel is a great evidence. You can't get to God by good deeds or strong effort. Not by human will, not by strength, yeah. not by flesh, but by my spirit. Like everything is done by God. So even 
understand like, God, who are you? How are you? Uh, that has to be done just by studying as diligently and carefully as you can everything that the Bible says. Yeah. And here's, here's what I wanted to refer to, just a few things. Exodus chapter 33, verse 20 says, but he said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. So this is God speaking to Moses. Moses is saying, show me your glory. He's like, you can't see my face. Uh, so God here is saying, you cannot see my face. Then in Exodus, uh, in Luke chapter 10, verses 21 and 22, it says this. This is speaking about Jesus. At that very time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this, for this was... For this way was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son, ex- who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. So we're, we're, I'm just kind of tackling a few different sections that all speak the same thing. No one knows the Father. No one sees the Father unless revealed by and through the work and effort and just glory of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. No one sees the Father, and it's always referring this even through Christ's own words. John chapter 1, verse 18, No one has seen God Mm -hmm. at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him or declared him. He has evidenced him. He has manifested him, whichever word you want to go into that. No one has ever seen God except the son who reveals him. So when we're, when we're considering this, we have to understand that Jesus is making very explicit statements while he himself also will make statements of his own deity. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if we're seeing Jesus and he's revealing himself and he's identifying the father through his own manifestation, his own life, his own uh, just excellence, then there is something being said about a distinct person within God's yeah. nature something that doesn't make sense to us because it's not three thoughts that are jumbling against each other yeah. it's not it's not what some people say it's not just voices talking to each other hearing voices it's not schizophrenia it's not yeah. something of that nature it is an ongoing uh functioning relationship which is divine and beyond us in such a way that worlds can be created hearts can be changed mm-hmm. and and things can be remade all by this one being who is god father son and holy spirit at the same time yeah and there is an ability for there to be a decision to do otherwise and yet all in unity jesus even said i don't do my will so theoretically he could do if he wanted to but everything is always perfectly without error without anything getting in the way or intermingling Mm -hmm. is always done in full and complete unity That's important. That's why the Trinity is not these three separate thoughts or three Mm -hmm. separate ideas or three separate beings or three separate emotions. It's never that. That's why the Athanasian Creed goes into such detail saying it's not a mixture. It's not a separation. It's not a confusion of natures. It is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All are eternal. All are knowledge. All are this. All are invincible. All are forever. So there's always this, this need to bring that unity aspect there whenever we're talking about the trinity yeah the trinity in the word itself it's comprised of two yeah two words tri meaning three and unity trinity Mm -hmm. exactly yeah Uh, yeah. just like uh john 6 46 not that anyone has seen the father except the one who is from god Mm -hmm. he has seen the father this is jesus jesus is the only one that has seen the father and there's people that say, oh, okay, that verse where Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Haven't I been with you so long, Philip? And they say, see, Jesus is saying he's the Father. That is not what that means. That is saying right. Jesus is declaring that all that he has shown and expressed and all mm-hmm. that he has given of himself, all that he has spoken, all that he has declared is a, a, a faithful and enough witness of who the Father is. Just like we can, through our life, be remade through salvation and regeneration, we can be remade and re- and conformed to the mm-hmm. image of Christ to give that light and image to the world of who Jesus Christ is. That doesn't make us Jesus. Right. That yeah. doesn't identify us as divine. That identifies us <laughs> with our Christ and with our King through, uh, through, through that unity, that unity uh, uh, being united to the Father through the Son. Well, you even have chapter 1 of Hebrews. I mean, there we go. It, it's, it's very clear um, that 
in his human nature, uh, the Son, uh, being who, who is the Word, he is the the image of the invisible. Father. Yeah. I mean, if we look at it, I, I can read it right here. Um, it says God, after He spoke a long uh, spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets, in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the world. Um, and it says, and He is the radiance of His glory and the exact representation of His nature, and upholds all things by the word of His power. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Um, and then, of course, it, it goes into uh, the angel portion. But having become as much, uh, as much better than the angels, as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. So I'll stop there. But we see clearly here that verse 3 makes, it, uh, it makes a, a, a bold statement to say that he is the exact representation yeah. uh, of the invisible God. I mean, it, it's, we see, for example, um, if we're talking, I know this is going to bleed into, because we're talking about the tri-unity of God. It's, it's going to bleed gonna, into each other. Share, yeah. 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 But if we go into, if I'm not mistaken, it's the, the first um, letter of Peter. Okay. Uh, he talks about the transfiguration to simply state and show that he is God. It's showing his deity. So it, it, we see the distinctions and then once you come into Hebrews, um, Hebrews is making the statement that he is the representation of the Father. Yeah. He himself is not the Father, but he is the one that, just like we're going back to the Scripture, he is the only one that has seen the Father. He explains him, he, he, he exegetes him. So that way, I think it's John 14, right? When they're saying, he who has seen me has seen the Father. You can correct me later. Um, uh, that's, Jesus is not saying, uh, I am the Father. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because growing up in, in the modalist background that we have, that was always those few yeah. scriptures that we could take out of context, even though the whole Bible uh, explains uh, from the revelation of the New Testament to, to understand the old, the distinction of the Son, the Word, you know, always being in existence, the triunity of God always being in existence. Jesus is not saying, I am, if you've seen me, it's because you saw the Father, I'm the Father. When the scriptures clearly state, that nobody has seen the Father. Yeah. It just simply means that He is the only one that can explain Him. He is the one. Uh, he is. He is the one that um, that has been made or came in in flesh yeah. and able to explain who the Father is. And that's how He did. Um, if we even go to His high priestly prayer, mm-hmm. uh, He says, "I have yeah. uh, uh, manifested Your name," or "I have." explained your name it's not it doesn't mean that oh uh you know jesus is the name of the father it isn't it's just simply stating that he has explained the nature of the father yeah i i got it right here if you want me to go ahead yeah to, to go ahead and read it I th- this reinforces this the, is first john 17 point. this is john 17. 17. john 17 i'm gonna go ahead and read from uh one all the way down to to five i'll, I'll stop at five um Jesus spoke these things, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you gave, all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I mean, what clear distinction. You know, that's just... You'd have to be right taught there. that that doesn't mean that to yeah. think that it doesn't. Uh, yeah. Scripture, there, there's a plenary aspect to reading Scripture. You read it plainly, you read it simply, until there's a good and just identifiable reason as to why something should be taken as a metaphor, why something should be taken as allegory or any of that. Like what The only time that you take Scripture to mean something not literal is when it couldn't mean that literally. Uh, when a story uh, talks about something strange and odd or, or an example that seems out of place to the actual narrative of where Jesus is, oh, it's like, oh, that's a parable. Jesus is on the mountain, but he's talking about a boat. It's like, that's not an actual thing. That's just a parable. That's an explanation. That yeah. might be a metaphor. But there, there's this plain reading of Scripture that we need to be able to to recognize. Like, God yeah. wrote it mm-hmm. to be read. 
And some people say, oh, you can't discern it unless it's spiritual. Yes, there is that verse that explains it. You cannot discern the, 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 the truths or the, the importance of it maybe or maybe how some things connect to your own spiritual life, but you can understand the yeah. Word of God and read it. it we kind of mentioned it in the last yeah, episode. Um, just kind of, and I always, I always connect this to Gnostic thought. You know, like there's some type of revelation uh, and people will take out of context the parables that Jesus gave and they ask him, why do you talk in parables? Well, it's only for you to understand. Yeah. But in the very same scripture, there's an explanation of what that means. Yep. We're, we're not living in parables. Uh, there isn't a, a level of revelation that other people have and don't have. That's the Gnostic or New Age Gnostic thought that comes in today or modern day Gnostics that say they have some type of re- revelation some of who God is. Yeah. It's exclusive knowledge because uh, I'll go back to the modalism that we, that, you know, we grew up in. Um, you know, people say, well, it's a oneness of God. It's a revelation. But clearly it isn't a revelation because that's not what the scripture says. And yeah. a revelation is not going to go against the scripture. Um, if you have Jehovah's Witness, they think it's the archangel sometimes or um, they think that it's a... A, a god or a little god the scripture clearly doesn't say that there is there is a a mentality already behind uh, that person that's already reading and that's how i was mm. there was already a thought process of well going back to at the beginning of the episode god is not this god is not yeah. this that's the only thing that we have to connect and that's how we read the scripture instead of understanding this is what it says um i, I really like there was an old uh, 1985 uh, debate, um, and I cannot remember his name anymore. Uh, he was an, an older, uh, I don't know if he was a, an apologist, uh, but his, his first name was Walter. I can't remember anymore. And and it was a va- basic understanding. He said the reason why there was an understanding of, of the Trinity is because uh, the theologians or the people that read it, they say, we see the Father. The Word of God says that He's God. And we see the Son, and the Scriptures say that He's God. And the Holy Spirit, we see in the scriptures and say, he's God. Yeah. There's not three gods. There's just one God. And we understand that this is one God, three persons, not human beings, but yeah. three attributes, or not attributes, sorry, the three, uh, see, and I'm even having, I'm <laughs> having trouble just trying to explain it, but the three, there's three, three persons. persons. But not in a human way. Exactly. Yeah. Three persons, not in a human way. And this is hard for us to, to just put in layman's terms, as opposed to if I'm a modalist and say, oh, well, uh, you know, there's one God, his name is Jesus, he manifests as the Father, and then he manifests as the Son, and manifests as the Holy Spirit. And the scriptures do not teach that. Yeah. You can read from the beginning all the way to the end, but what I'm trying to un- trying to just make clear here, as as you can see, the evidence of me struggling <laughs> is just sim- the simple fact that we just accept what the word says, and we should be at peace with that. Mm. But there's always a a, and I want to say this very carefully, but because we know how the enemy is. Uh, the, the the scripture says that the enemy tries to bring confusion. Yeah, God is not the author of confusion, and so when we simply read the scripture and understand. The Father is God. There's no debate about that. Right. The debate is always with Jesus Christ mm-hmm. and even the Holy Spirit. For yeah. those that think that the Holy Spirit is an it as opposed mm-hmm. to Him, and it's not an impersonable force. Yeah, it, it's it's God. It's Lord. It, he is, and there we go again. He is Lord. He is God. Uh, and these are just some of the things that as as human beings struggle with. Yeah. And so when you already have a thought process on how to read the Word, that's the issue. Look at this. I got this for it to kind of go with your statement. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, starting at verse 3, it says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel mm. of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Mm. Yeah. And it's funny because I was, I was on that because... Uh, there was. It's funny how this all connected. Um, when uh, when we were, you know, talking about church history, Sibelius uh, in the two hundreds, priest that was in Africa. You know, he came up and he was preaching in Rome. Uh, but he got, you know, he got excommunicated from the church mm-hmm. after a while by one of the. Uh, I forgot which the guy's name was, uh, for teaching this whole modalism thing, right? Yeah. But one of the verses that he was like maybe really thinking about as he came into the understanding of, of uh, modalism in the way we would think about um, how 
they teach that it's God puts on different masks. Mm-hmm. Oh, different, yeah. you know, he, sometimes he's, well, it would be, he was the Old Testament father. He's the New Testament Jesus. He's the modern day spirit, Ooh, right? Yeah. That's how they would say, this persona. And, and the word that, that he came up with was um, prosopa, which how we get that word for persona. Um, but he was going, I think, off of Second uh, Corinthians 4, at the end, after that por- portion that I just read, mm-hmm. he says uh, in verse five, "For we proclaim is not of our is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake, for God who said, Let the light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge to the glory of God in the face of Jesus." And this is the whole idea of the of the it's in Jesus the Father's in Jesus's face, and, and so it comes into this idea that 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 God is is one, mm-hmm. you know, and as there is no three persons, it's just that if you see Jesus, you're seeing the Father, and then this is what Sabellius is kind of trying to push, and he uses the whole thing that I know we all cringe when we see the uh, well. The Trinity is kind of like the sun, where it's the the or light the and the heat and the <laughs> and the you know the circle of it, and that's exact. Sibelius actually came up with that, yeah. you know, like oh. or or that's the Trinity's Sibelianism, water. Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the water idea, you know, yeah. or, the, or yeah, the egg. That's the, modalism. Yeah, Patrick. or the three leaf clover, you know, <laughs> or and and that's it, what what and understanding uh, how he took that out of context. That is the exact thing that takes uh, takes me back to when I used to uh, understand scripture that way because it was it was not the son that manifested himself in flesh the the thought process was the father manifested himself in flesh uh-huh. and the son was just the flesh oh I see but the issue is now the son the, is the name of the body uh-huh, and uh-huh. and the, the son is the name of the body but Those yet some interesting but yet Jesus <laughs> but yet Jesus is the name of the father because the name was given to the angels to give to it so it's 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 really it's really copy and paste um, kind of like, rip out it's here like, it's like Jesus is the name in the body. And the body's identity is the sun. Oh, I see. Yeah, and then but, so it's but just the, a shell. Wow. Yeah, no actual life. Like, and, and I've even it's just heard, the spirit. like as far as to go, there was a modalist preacher uh, that I heard. He said you cannot give uh, the sun credit for nothing. Like he went as far as to say that wow. because it. And, and this is why for me, there's a connection with uh, modalism. And Arianism, yeah. where you reject the oh, sun, or degrade, you degrade, or you just simply reject the son uh, of his deity. Yeah. When that's not the case, it, the Father did not come in flesh; it was the Word that came in flesh, who is mm-hmm. the eternal Son. And then the other passages taken out of context was, well, Jesus says, "Well, if I don't go, then the Holy Spirit, uh, I can't send the Holy Spirit." And so the thought process is, well, you know, if 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 uh, if if he isn't the Holy Spirit, why does he have to go? Mm-hmm. You know, why, who's, who's going to be the, the one coming? Because Jesus says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Well, of course, if you understand the scripture in context, he doesn't leave us because it is through the Holy Spirit who he himself ministers in his role to bring us back to Christ, to focus on mm-hmm. Christ, as Christ's ministry on the earth was to give glory to the Father. Because I'd be worried about your soul Why you still be doubting you got a soul Like you need to see to believe these things But you believe things that you've never seen Like feelings and hopes and dreams The future emotions and gravity And sadly, everything you're rejecting Makes this whole life a tragedy And I got something to say I got something to say I got something to say to the world And I got a place to make I got steps to take